Welcome to Community of Love Christian Fellowship, where God loves you and we do too. Join us in person on Sundays from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. for 60 minutes of dynamic praise, inspiring fellowship, and life-changing worship. Point your GPS to 557 Cambridge Street in the Austin neighborhood of Boston, Massachusetts, 02134. Visit us on the web at colcf.org. That's colcf.org. To learn more about our Friday evening services, our various ministries, and our upcoming special events. Now, let's join the service already in progress. Thank you. 
We are here to reflect on what God said to the Lord. We're here to reflect on commitment. So I'd like to invite you to turn with me to the 14th chapter of Luke. Luke, the 14th chapter, beginning in the 25th verse and continuing through verse 33. I invite you to turn to whatever your resource is. And if you don't have one in front of you, a Bible, a computer, a phone, please listen to the word of the Lord. And the as follows, beginning in verse 25 of the 14th chapter of Luke. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose if one of you wants to build a tower, will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or, suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything, he cannot be my disciple. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So for the next few moments, I'd like to invite you to reflect with me on the topic. On this road trip, what if you don't commit? On this road trip, what if you don't So you know that I love the disciples and have a particular fondness for Brother Luke who is telling the story here of Jesus and this point in Jesus' ministry. And you know, when people have been in ministry for a little while, sometimes they gain a little notoriety. People want to hear from them. People want to follow around. People want to travel with the preacher. People want to drive the preacher. Well, there was no driving. That was that he wasn't there. So in this case, crowds were just following Jesus around. And everyone had come to get something. People wanted healing. People wanted love. People wanted compassion. People wanted to know that they belonged to something. And all of these hopes they brought to Jesus. So can you imagine? So much like us. We're so hopeful sometimes. We go through these periods, especially when the weather starts to warm up. And we start to reflect on the change of seasons and how spring brings this renewal of life. And then summertime brings us warm weather where we can slow down a little bit and where we can reflect a little bit and where we can begin to think about where we are in our lives. And so just imagine that you are among these disciples. Not just the twelve, but all the disciples. All of the multitudes that had gathered around Jesus. And we're excited, and it's warm, and we have smiles on our faces, and we've heard about this man named Jesus, and we heard about what he could do. And he comes out with hate, carry a cross, which means crucifixion, and then he tells us to give up everything. I don't know about you, but sometimes when you reflect on the Lord of God, it makes you go, as Brother Arsenio used to say, hmm. So here we are. Remember, this is the 4th of July weekend. We're hanging out and everybody's happy. Barbecues are happening. We roll up to our mentor, our friend, the celebrity of the hour. 
Father, if you look to him for a word, a blessing, a kind thought, and he says, hate, carry something that's designed to kill you, and you're going to have Now clearly, there's something more going on here. And so we find ourselves in a quandary. We find ourselves wondering what this word hate means. And brother, don't you know, we look at our Hebrew, we look at our Greek, and sometimes we come to a word that has several meanings. We come to this word and we find that the word hate actually means hate in the original context. So then you come, wait a minute, we might have a problem here. So when you read the book, and the book seems to demonstrate something that seems to contradict the very terms of the book, Jesus is saying the 
if the cause of Christ were in saying, if Jesus came today to that door and he went, will we be willing to give up that vacation? Would we, will, will we be willing to give up that beautiful ride? Would we be willing to give up all the things that surround us, all of our creature comforts, all of those things that we enjoy? Would you be willing to give them up? So Jesus is reminding us that in order to follow me, there may come a time when you have to give up your stuff to follow me, lest you find yourself in a position of idolatry, which means in effect that you would find yourself potentially worshiping the thing, the thing over Christ. So think about this comparative relationship. Those of you who love math, I'm sure understand these comparisons far better than I do. But we have Jesus and the stuff. We have Jesus and the cross. We have Jesus and all the people. And we have hate in the middle. We have this comparative analysis that Jesus is laying on. Can you imagine? And then he goes on and he says, Play. And then he says, plan for war, all you presidents. Plan. Plan. And if you don't, the results will be visible for all to see. And I heard they were filling in that big hole that was five days basement in this event. Oh my God. I think about all the people who cried and were sad and reflected upon Christmas and 40 years of this, that, and the other. Yeah. It's 
But you see, when you're tempted to do some of the stuff that some of us are tempted to do, it's Jesus that gives us escape from temptation. The escape from temptation, the thing that keeps you from cussing out women out at the job, no matter what she does or says to you. The temptation to present, prevent yourself from doing things to yourself, sometimes when you know that the decision over here is the right, right one. Jesus protects us. Jesus provides for us. Jesus gives us grace when we know we are to walk past those consequences because we have committed our very lives to our Lord and Savior yes. Jesus Christ. Oh, but that's not it. Then, those people who don't want to speak, those people who will speak about you behind your back all the time, those people who would plan your ruin are those Wonderful things that happen on television. If you watch it purposefully, you can allow the 